The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day. Most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with the traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, <coughs> that hits the spot. Surprisingly, the auto post box has no graffiti on it. Maybe people around here are finally starting to respect our government and its fine agencies. The Postal Service has gotten much faster since the stamp price went to $10. I should get my credit card back tomorrow morning. Chelsea runs a first-rate newsstand. Chelsea's a hot little number. I hear she's a mutant, but it doesn't show. The only weird thing about her is she won't go out with me. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. He's a crusty old World War III vet with a face like a raisin and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. What do you want, Miffy? Fine. How you doing, Rook? I'm not in the mood for small talk. Well then, by all means, let's discuss a serious topic. Are breaking, entering, and robbery serious enough for you, Murphy? Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday, I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. How much is a fair amount of cash? In this case, $8,000. Boy, that's a lot of clams, Rook. Don't you think I know that? The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times eight thousand I loaned her, it was a good deal for me. Did you get any other information from this Emma Nimpton? She left a phone number. I called her this morning, but the line is disconnected. So do you have any leads on recovering the bracelet? No, the police are a waste of time, and I can't afford to hire a decent P.I. I guess this means you don't consider me good enough to help track down the bracelet? I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors, which could come in handy. Come back here, and I'll show you where they broke in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. As I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every P.I. worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. Well, obviously, the window was broken from the outside. A shard of glass must have come from that broken window. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Looks like whoever broke into Rook's window left one of his hairs behind. Apparently, our burglar is a carrot top. Looks like a shoe print is outlined in that sticky pool of something resembling chocolate. Footprints about a size 14. Hmm. Looks like a key of some kind.
Reminds me of playing hoops when I was younger, in the days before my lower vertebrae turned into petrified rock. Hmm, it's one of those basketballs they used to give away at Weenie World. Ten seconds left, down by one. Murphy has the ball, he fakes, he drives, it's a 360! He's fouled! Well, that steep staircase looked really hard to climb. Hey, this door's just painted on. Wow, a recyclable paper can. Finally, a glimmer of ecological responsibility. I didn't know Rook cared. These disgusting piles of trash remind me of Aunt Betty's annual yard sales. The texture of the pavement surface is a cross between a spilled coke and sandstone. These are empty jumbo-sized cans of Camel's Chunky Chocolate Soup. Mmm, -hmm, good. Hmm, an empty bottle of evanescent spring water. For those with a higher class of thirst. Whoever uses these garbage cans is either a terrible shot or is saving them for that special piece of trash. Every time I see yellow-gray water oozing out of a gutter, I just can't help but thirst for a cup of coffee from the brew and stew. These are empty jo- Hmm, an empty bottle of- The empty bottles of chocolate syrup lying all around this alley all look like they've been licked clean. Whoa! This antique boombox worked. I bet it'd only play the Bee Gees. This old relic probably hasn't worked in years. Hey, there are batteries in here. Oh, man! This dumpster smells like 20-year-old mayonnaise, and I ought to know. Well, I'll be darned. Except for the filth and stench, the interior isn't much different than the average studio apartment. In fact, it's nicely furnished. Someone's been living here, and I wonder if he saw anything. Oh, I would love to see my ex-mother-in-law squeeze through there. Well, this is a section of the Bay City Mirror. It's a weekly newsletter that covers local goings-on written by mutants for mutants. I'd subscribe if they had a comics page.
Louis Laments runs the Brew and Stew, which is a local hangout. These posters somehow survived the big war. They're bitter reminders of the past glory of this great city. Louis Laments I like to stand by these, waiting for a glimpse of Rita. This is the brand new electronic shop outlet, no pun intended. I won't be This is the brand new electronic shop outlet, no pun intended. I won't be able to get inside the electronic shop until I get a membership card. Francesca Lucido makes the spiciest pizza in the city. The only thing spicier than her cooking is her imagination. And right now she seems to have a thing for me. These signs around here haven't been replaced in at least 50 years. This is the spot where Dr. Moolong had his dentist's office. Everyone around here calls it Toothbrush Hill. Man, there are signs of radioactivity everywhere. Some of this devastation came from the Barney the Dinosaur Museum. No one was too upset when it became one of the first structures to get blasted in the war. Everyone refers to this stuff as Barney Rubble. Ah, the once majestic Chandler Avenue. There's enough radiation in this asphalt to fry an egg on Christmas morning. Chelsea Bando's the kind that could hold her own with anyone, but she has a way of turning my knees to jelly. She's a mutant just like everyone else in this part of town, but she's a real beauty. Well, hello, stranger. Chelsea, you're breaking my heart. Why? Because I've got a steady job? No, it's just you're so beautiful it makes me ache. Let me buy you a drink and I'll tell you where it hurts. Gee, Tex, you know, that kind of talk could get you into trouble. But I don't drink with customers. I'd be happy to throw in a chili dog with that drink. An offer like that, oh, that's hard to refuse. But no thanks. So, is there something I can do for you? Rook acts like a tough guy, but he's a softy. Just don't tell him that to his face. Oh, you know me, Tex. I'm just making ends meet. I love Louis, but his friendliness doesn't fool me. He's a sharp one. He knows everything that's going on in this neighborhood. Franny's a live wire. Either she or Sal is going to do time for killing the other one. I have never seen a couple fight like they do. Sal's a handful. He's a nice guy, but I don't know, I feel kind of naked when he gives me the eye. Luckily, Ardo seems to like me. I mean, if I were on his bad side, I'd be tempted to relocate. He could crush a Subaru with one hand. Wish I could help you there, Tex. Sorry, I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy had these bright green eyes and a tattoo of an anchor on his arm. The crusade is big. I mean, much bigger than most people know. They have operatives all over, and then these huge sections of the norm population are joining. Well, they say it's a religion, but then they encourage the members to be violent and prejudiced towards others. Wish I could help you there, Tex. The Golden Gate Hotel was once known as the Waldorf of the Pacific. Its halls are still sturdy, and the walls have worn well. But there's nobody living inside. Hmm, it's all locked up. The only way I'm gonna get inside is by using my innate cleverness or ingenuity, or maybe a key. Rusty the Clown's Novelty Shop. Closed down a few months ago after Rusty mysteriously disappeared. The police suspect foul play, but I think he probably just choked to death on his own bad jokes. 
The Bijou Theater used to be quite a night spot. It was condemned years ago and could collapse any day. There's no way I'm going in there. On the top floor of this place is where I hang my hat. It's not much, but it's better than... Well, it's not much. My trusty 31 lightning bolt speeder. I still regret not getting the sunroof option. <laughs>